Success often hinges not just on how much we have studied or the connections we have, although those are important and beneficial. True success often depends on understanding how to live correctly. Begin with yourself and your own life. The main problem people in modern society face is a lack of energy. This lack of energy leads to numerous mental health issues. People become nervous, angry, offended, unable to concentrate, unable to work long hours, and unable to stay in the same job for long. All of this indicates a simple lack of natural energy or health, which are essentially the same. Let me briefly share my research. I have seriously studied this topic through personal experience and observations with friends. I have come to certain conclusions about how people should live so that their psyche works steadily and their life in general gets on track. First, we have a certain environment in which we live and we must understand how it works. The sun, when it rises, it activates human life functions. The sun is the energy of joy. That means when it rises, we should also rise. At six in the morning, the sun crosses a certain line and it doesn't matter whether it's dark or light at that time. What matters is that this happens at 6 a.m. It can cross either directly, then it's visible, or very shallowly, then it's not visible. But at that time, at six in the morning, by the sun, not by New York time, not by Los Angeles time, but by the sun. When the sun is at its zenith here in your city, find out what time it approximately is. What time does the sun reach its zenith here, do you know? At 11.45. At 11.45. So, nearly 12. Which means you need to be up by quarter to six to live by the sun. And if you get up later, then here's what happens. The sun rises, but your body is still lying down. This means that all the solar energy in your body starts acting destructively. It begins to overheat you. What does this mean? It means that your inflammatory processes will increase. For women, it immediately increases the chance of infertility because the main problem with female infertility is overheating of the body. That means infertility, emotional tension, nervous breakdowns, increased inflammatory processes in the body. Overall, there will be lethargy, suppressed will throughout the day. Digestion decreases, immunity drops. And if you get up, say, not at 7, not at 8, but at 9, then you already have brain problems. That means your psyche will begin to suffer. In other words, to be unsuccessful in life, it's enough to simply get up late. That's it. Your body starts functioning not as it should. Now, moving on. You should know that the energy of the sun aids in digesting food. Food can be digested not only by the energy of the sun, but also by our psyche. Our subtle body has its own energy of fire, but it is primarily used for thinking and the ability to act. So, when someone eats a heavy meal early in the morning, before the sun has risen, what happens? In the early morning, the energy of prana is very active, fresh and beneficial. But without the sun, the food cannot be properly digested. Consequently, the body quickly pushes the food down. So, when a person eats heavily early in the morning, everything just goes to waste because the body can't digest it. Naturally, as this food passes through the intestine, it still needs digestive fire. So next time you'll want to eat only at three in the afternoon. And by then, the sun is already setting. This means that you ate and the food turned into toxins. And as a result, your work capacity will decrease. If you eat at 3 in the afternoon, the sun is already setting. Where will the energy for digestion come from? It is taken from the energy of mental activity. Consequently, a person experiences a certain syndrome. In the past, when people read books, it was noted that when a person ate late, they would start reading a book. But 40 minutes after eating, they would encounter a problem. Since there isn't enough solar energy, the energy of the mind is diverted to the stomach. The first thing that happens is the frozen line syndrome. A person reads a book, then stops at one line and doesn't even realize they can't move forward. This means that the energy of the mind sharply went into digestion. Then comes the nodding syndrome. When the energy runs out, the person loses strength and starts to fall asleep. This happens about 40 minutes after eating. Next is the yellow spot on the book syndrome. If you're flipping through a book and see a yellow spot on a page, it means the person ate late. Saliva leaked out as they were falling asleep. You can tell them about it and they'll be surprised. They'll say, wow, you're like Sherlock Holmes. Morning time is meant for overcoming fate. Early in the morning as the sun rises is the best time for cleansing and improving health. Only at sunrise can one heal the body. At other times, health is not as easily restored. 
This means that jogging, exercises and fasting are best done in the morning, before the sun rises. When the sun rises, you can understand how to live correctly. This is when a person prays early in the morning. The very early morning time is meant for understanding truth, for overcoming fate. Then, the next time period is for improving your health. After that, focus on sorting out your life. From around 10 in the morning until noon is the best time to understand how to improve your activities and communicate with your loved ones. This time is for understanding the truth, for gaining insight. You might say, Dr. Torsunov, I start work at 7 in the morning. That's fine. While working, you can still think about how to live correctly, and you will succeed. Have a very light breakfast in the morning. What's morning food? Nuts, fruits, dried fruits, all dairy, sour cream, cheese, and so on. Also buckwheat, millet. These are all non-grain foods. Grain is food that ripens in the sun. The song goes, golden ears of bread are full to the brim, full of sun. It's a song about the sun. Grains ripen in the sun. Beans ripen in the high sun. This means that all grain foods, legumes, should be eaten at lunch. Neither in the evening nor in the morning should one eat a lot of grains because they won't be digested properly. Vegetables ripen under the light of the moon, so vegetables should be eaten at lunch and in the evening because they digest well during these times. Fruits ripen in the rising sun, so fruits can be eaten in the morning. Nuts can also be eaten in the morning and in the evening as well, meaning daytime meals should be the most substantial. You can have all the heavier foods for lunch. In the evening, it's best to eat vegetables, stewed vegetables, and not use too much salt or spices. When they say salt is harmful, they mean it's only harmful in the morning and evening. At lunchtime, salt is not harmful. It's only harmful in the evening. And in the morning, food should taste sweet. You should eat sweet in the morning, because sweetness is associated with optimism, with solar energy. At lunch, all six tastes should be present. And in the evening, the taste should be bland. That means the food should be calming and not overly flavorful, as different tastes correspond to different moods. When a person eats correctly, life becomes easier for them. Morning time is for overcoming fate, daytime is for work, and evening is for family. As the power of the moon starts to increase from six in the evening, that's when the energy of love in a person's life increases. The moon isn't just Earth's satellite. It carries the energy of love and rest. That's why people should go to bed early. Ideally, one should go to bed around 10 p.m. and wake up no later than 6 a.m. because sleep is most effective during these hours. If someone goes to bed late, they don't get enough rest because they miss out on the moon's benefits. Going to bed late means needing to sleep past 6 and that sleep is destructive. It exhausts rather than rejuvenates. Have you noticed how sleeping in late makes it harder to sleep later and tires you out? This sleep is exhausting because as the sun rises, it compels you to get up. Still, if you went to bed late, you need to sleep seven hours anyway. Cutting down on sleep shortens one's lifespan. So rest is still necessary. And when a person sleeps, it's essential to have a window open. If no fresh air comes in during sleep, it also destroys your health. Adjust the window so it's not too breezy, but ensure it's slightly open. It might be in an adjacent room, so the air flows in from there. But if there is no airflow and you lock everything up, preventing air from entering, then you are damaging your health in this way. Conception should occur at night because it's the most suitable time of day. When children are conceived during the day, they are born sick. In the evening, mentally ill. In the morning, sensitive. But at night, healthy. Children should be conceived under the moonlight. For good relationships with loved ones, build them in the evening, as this time is meant for family relations. I've briefly explained what a daily routine is. If a person has this knowledge, the effectiveness of their life increases significantly. Without this knowledge, if a person goes to bed late, they gradually become tense. This tension is psychological, physical, and mental. These three types of tension. Physical tension leads to illness. Psychological tension leads to alcoholism. And mental tension leads to smoking. For example, if a person goes to bed late, they may develop two bad habits. If a person wakes up late, their willpower diminishes affecting their health and luck, making them ineffective. And naturally, goodbye to luck as well, because the person becomes ineffective. They will be ineffective if they get up late. Therefore, if you want success and a good life, keep pace with time. You need to walk in step with time, neither rushing ahead nor lagging behind. That's a successful life. 
Next, you need to understand what time is. Time is a force that tests us in this world. It's not just what shows on a clock, it's a force that tests us. Time in the subtle energy body increases the number of trials with each passing year. And in the physical body, it increases the number of hardships. This is called the aging process. You should know that time affects both the subtle energy and physical bodies in two ways, cyclical time and stable time. Remember, people don't die from old age, but from entering a difficult period. What is a difficult period? A difficult period is when either the body suddenly starts to suffer, indicating a new cycle, or the psyche becomes very weak and susceptible to various stresses. That means when calamities start piling up on a person. It's important to understand that there are forces that help overcome these cycles to influence these cycles. These cycles can be neutralized if you know the right methods. To generally improve one's fate and reduce the impact of bad fortune, there is one rule for everyone. Understand that when fate manifests, it acts through memory. If a person's memory is focused on themselves, their difficulties, their problems, it means fate controls that person and destroys their life. If a person focuses their memory on something noble and pure, only the noble and pure are stronger than the memory of oneself or one's fate. Only God is stronger than the memory of oneself. Then fate loses its strength and begins to retreat. That means that it stops affecting the person. Thus one must focus on God, and our memory only reacts to fear and love. And it's only these two emotions that our memory responds to and nothing else can attract it. But fear is not a viable option. Today you're afraid, tomorrow it's better, and you're no longer afraid. So there's only one option, love. Therefore, if you see someone praying, someone praying very intensely with love, thinking of God, you can feel it in their chants, in their prayer. You can tune in and repeat the prayer along with them. A person's intelligence engages. Let's say you're listening to a prayer. Fate isn't conquered, even though you remember it. Why? Because fate is conquered by the intelligence. And if you repeat the prayer along with them, then the action of influencing your fate begins. When you simply listen to the prayer, your mood changes. Mood is a superficial function of the mind, not a deep function. Fate is the deepest function of the mind. For the deep function of the mind to change, you need to repeat as they do. When a person repeats a prayer along with those who are praying, they should listen to how they love God. And when a person listens to those who repeat how they love God at that moment, their listening destroys the possibility of fate tormenting you. Moreover, a difficult fate weakens because of this. This weakening acts on three circles of life. The first circle of life is called my inner state, my inner world. The first thing that happens during such listening, when a person listens to those who pray and repeats the prayer or tunes in with them, is that the space of the heart is cleansed. It is very important for a person to distract from themselves. A selfless attitude engages victory over fate. This is success. As long as a person is focused on themselves, thinking about themselves, they cannot be successful because their sense of self-worth turns towards a destructive relationship with the surrounding world. The right relationship with this world is an exchange. For instance, I smile at you, you smile back at me, and I feel fulfilled. If I want something from you, you tense up and neither of us is fulfilled. Fear, anxiety, and hustle, all these separate a person from the world, preventing fulfillment. If one can't be fulfilled, they can't overcome. The main problem in modern society is disempowerment. People suffer from a lack of energy, so we need to learn this knowledge. If a person does nothing to improve themselves, they focus on fear, hustle, and worries. This means they are setting themselves up for self-destruction. To overcome fate, one must focus on service. Service is faith, respect, joy. A person has two ways to act in this world. The first is to be a closed system or a dimming light bulb. The second is to plug into the network. How to connect to the network? Listen to those who pray and give not of yourself, but what you have heard, pass on to others. As a result, one become a conduit of the energy of happiness. It does not belong to me. I take it and give it away. How can one make it work to conquer fate? A person shouldn't wish for happiness at this time. Don't think, oh, I feel good now. You need to forget about your happiness. Listen to those who pray and give, listen and give. And during this time, this energy of happiness washes over our fate and heals. This is the first method, the oldest and strongest to overcome fate. The first circle of life within ourselves, meaning 
I begin to feel that though my wife seems to be leaving, I am well, calm. This doesn't mean I'm indifferent and it doesn't bother me if my wife leaves. No, it means I've already conquered 30% of my fate. The next stage is to continue repeating prayers or saying I wish happiness to all. Prayers should be repeated with those who are praying. Short prayers. Short prayers are focused not on oneself but on God. What are these prayers? For example, praise be to God, praise be to God. These are short prayers. Praise be to God means I glorify God, I forget about myself. Or hallelujah, hallelujah, praise be to God, praise be to God. One can say glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You can say Allahu Akbar, which means God is great, and so forth. Thus, a person repeats a short prayer that glorifies God. Not the azan, not the namaz. A person repeats not something long, but something short and glorifying God. Not about himself, but about him. That's what conquers faith. All other prayers are meant to improve a person's life, mood. So, to understand the relationship with God. But the arrow that pierces faith is the short prayer which is chanted on the prayer beads and chanted together with those who pray. Because if a person repeats alone, that person will immerse himself in memories of himself. Suppose you repeat Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. A person seems to be repeating but actually thinks of himself. This means that there will be no victory over fate. Because your memory is not connected with the prayer, it is connected with you. This means it's all in vain. But if you listen to those who pray, you then join the common space of prayer. This space doesn't belong to the people who chanting, but to God. When a person joins others in prayer, they enter a shared space of triumph over fate, experiencing three stages. The first is peace in the heart. I am already at peace. I believe my wife will come back. The second stage is between us. These threads are being cleansed. My wife left because these threads were foul, making it difficult for us to communicate. Now, after a few months, I have cleared them. It's easy for us to talk. I'm no longer angry that she left. The third stage is in her heart, where my fate also lies. The third circle of my fate is in her heart. The wife changes her attitude towards me and wants to return. This can take three, five, ten months, but you progress consistently. Who among you has felt peace in their heart after a loved one has left? Raise your hand. The first stage is past. Who among you felt that you could communicate with them? and that communication was improving. The second stage of fate is past. Who is in a situation where they began to say, I was a fool to leave you. The third stage is almost past. It means they will soon return. There might also be a case where he says, I was a fool to leave, but I can't come back because I have children here now, among other things. Then, in this case, as the person is dealing with their fate, they simply need to overcome it. And if this person does not want to comply with your fate, with the will of your fate, then God immediately provides someone else. Meaning, God has plenty of men. Which one of them returns because you overcame your fate depends on the free will of the person that God has given you. And if he does not want to comply with the will of God, then God provides someone even better. Therefore, there is only one way for a person. For example, if a family is broken, there is no need to say, I'll find someone else. The only way is to turn everything back. And if the person does not return, but you have walked your path, then God provides another. But if you're the one who left, you also need to return. If there is someone else, then repent in your heart and restore the relationship with this person. When the time comes, you will receive another. But if you do not want to do anything, then you will not get another, but a hit on the head. Because God has not only rewards, but also punishment. And how does it work? You will find out. For example, when a man leaves a woman, usually God has such a way to punish men. God gives him a very beloved, very beautiful woman. So he leaves his wife and immediately receives a very beloved and very beautiful one. Why? It's very simple. So that he becomes deeply attached to this woman, very deeply attached. And then she leaves him just as he left his wife. That's exactly what happens. Now, when a woman leaves a man, the punishment is exactly the opposite. She loses the possibility of close and warm relationships. There might be many men, but no family. And she suffers and suffers and suffers. Until she returns her feelings and repents, she will remain alone. Like in the song, here's what happens to me. My old friend doesn't visit, but the fickle and wrong ones come in vain hustle. What does it mean? She left her man. You sneezed. It must be true. 
There are signs. Signs. That's another topic. Signs of fate. The Lord always confirms everything through people. Someone might fall off a chair when you say something important. Someone might sneeze and so on. There's such a process of communication, of exchange. So, listen again. This voice in which you must learn to remember God. It's very hard not to think about oneself. Very hard. I've only told you the theory, but you practice it. Keep practicing. There are three stages of immersion in prayer. The first stage is called support. At some point, I feel good repeating with them. I feel supported. This means that your intelligence has engaged in overcoming faith. A person needs to repeat with their heart, not as if the more I repeat, the quicker the victory over fate will come. The same if one repeats quickly, I love you, I love you, a person won't like that. But if a person says it slowly from the heart, I love you, that's different. The same in prayer, don't rush. Some repeat this way, thinking they need to do it faster, repeat more prayers, that's foolish. You need to repeat with the heart, which means calmly, because excessive speeding takes the sound out of the heart. It first goes to the throat and into emotions, then to the brain. If the sound leaves the heart, there will be no victory over fate. The second stage of immersion in prayer is called opening of the heart. A person repeats, I wish everyone happiness, and he feels somehow good in his heart. At that time, it's important not to lose this feeling. Like, I feel good to heck with everyone. Prayer, to heck with it. At that moment, you need to remember the sacred and be grateful with this good, giving it to people and to God. Remember the sacred things you have in life and think about them. What if you cry? It's the same. It's focusing on yourself, on I feel good. But you need to continue praying. And the third stage, a sudden flow of thoughts about oneself. The heart opens up, means fate has opened its gates for victory over it. The first sign that fate has opened up is feeling good in the heart and you start repeating from the heart. You feel that you are truly repeating from the heart. I wish everyone happiness. Then fate opens its gates, and from there a flurry of thoughts comes pouring out. Suddenly you forget about the prayer. You only think about yourself, dwelling on something. You need to distract yourself from these thoughts and still remember those who are praying. Gradually, what begins to happen? The significance of these thoughts begins to melt away. This means the power of fate begins to diminish. Previously, you thought, I can't, and then suddenly, I can. I repeat, I wish everyone happiness, and feel that I can now cope with fate. Thus, the person feels that everything is normal, nothing to fear, everything will be okay. That's how fate is defeated. This is the very first and most crucial action that a person must take. In this action, the stationary position of the body helps when a person prays without moving. In this interaction, the effectiveness increases manyfold. The stationary position of the body itself increases a person's longevity. I will talk about this today, but it also gives the strength to overcome fate through prayer. A stationary position, not moving, not walking, just staying still. Regarding prayer, I've briefly told you everything. Generally, if you want more, we have good people clubs. In these good people clubs, we have training sessions. I conduct prayer retreats with the clubs. We learn about prayer. Such retreats and training sessions are also held at our festivals. These festivals can change your entire life. If you want your relative to get on the right path, suggest they attend the festival. They have no chance not to get involved in this work on themselves. There, thousands of people are all running around joyful. Even though people who came just to relax will still attend some events and get involved, they simply have no choice. A person has three types of aging, mental and physical. Well, we are now speaking from a health perspective, not from the perspective of fate, but from that of health. These three types of aging involve the excitation of three energies of the soul. In other words, there is the energy of happiness. If a person does not perform asceticism practices for their own happiness, then the energy of happiness stagnates in the body and turns into laziness. This laziness turns into excess weight and toxins. This is the first stage of aging excess weight and toxins. Toxins equal viral infections. So if you are suffering from a viral infection or have excess weight, it means you're in the first stage of aging. Your age doesn't matter. The second stage of aging includes chronic infections and benign tumors. The third stage involves malignant tumors and severe infections like tuberculosis, HIV, and so forth. What to do to overcome this type of aging? 
All types of aging are conquered by properly aligning one's sense of self-worth towards wishing happiness for everyone. That means that forgetting about oneself, getting fresh air, or perhaps doing it at home, but then going outside to get fresh air. Because some women can't run outside where there are dogs and so on. But now there are flat treadmills available. Even if you have no space at home, you can slide this treadmill behind the wardrobe. You can lay it out at home, run as much as you need to. Then store it behind the wardrobe. Then go out to the balcony or outside and spend some time there to let the energy of nature enter you. Running acts like a capacitor, making the energy of nature enter the body, attracting it there. This means an asceticism practice aimed at health. When a person has excess weight or toxins, two asceticism practices completely defeat this. But both together, not one, not each separately, but both together. The first asceticism practice is prolonged joyful continuous movement. You might say, I move a lot at work, but it's about continuous joyful movement. You hustle at work, not rejoice. It needs to be continuous, lengthy and joyful. And the second asceticism practice is water fasting, also in a state of joy and self-sufficiency. These two asceticism practices remove excess weight, toxins, and thus a person gets rid of this type of aging, including both malignant and benign tumors. These two actions remove aging from the body and prevent these types of diseases. How does this happen? This morning in your park, where I saw none of you, I ran 16 kilometers in a joyful, peaceful state. Now I have a question for you. Can you tell I've been traveling to different cities for over 20 days, enduring flights, giving lectures? Do I look tired, worn out? What do I radiate? Health, calmness, strength. Why? Because I have absorbed your local nature. I've been nourished by your nature and you haven't absorbed your own. Now listen closely. When a person starts their movement with joy and calmness, don't overdo it. Don't start running too much all at once. Because what does your body do when you run? You gain energy from nature during your run and it immediately starts to heal. And this means that when you stop running, this energy stagnates a bit, so your body starts to ache or hurt slightly. This means it's being capricious, saying, give me more energy for healing. And you're not running anymore, so the body will ache a bit after your runs. Some think this means they're getting worse, that they're starting to fall ill. No, it's healing even if it's the joints or the spine or something else that's aching. And know that one should always start this movement very carefully. Suppose you start running 500 meters. You can run 500 meters every day. When you run for 22 minutes, these 22 minutes give a person the ability to always be alert, to have good concentration, good memory. These first 22 minutes of running are for your work ability. They don't contribute to your health. In other words, if you run no more than 22 minutes, you won't get healthier from it. All that energy goes into work, your activity, mood, and everything else. Walking twice as long, meaning 44 minutes of walking, doesn't contribute to health either. It just improves mood, alertness, and so on. Know that a person has five energy layers related to health. They cleanse one after another. The first, protective, linked with a person's workability, interaction with this world. The second energy layer is related to the skin mucous membranes, meaning the mucous membranes of the stomach intestines linked with digestion, the lymphatic system, immunity, hair, nails, all that stuff. If you run up to 44 minutes or walk twice as much, you clear the second layer. This means all digestive diseases go away, skin diseases go away over time. They first get treated, they will heal for a while, and then they go away. Through such mild exacerbation, there will be healing because functions are changing. The body needs strength. Suppose you might need about six months to start running 44 minutes. Don't rush, don't overdo it. When a person runs 44 minutes, they no longer need to run every day. It should be done every other day. And when a person run, you shouldn't stop because if you stop, the cleansing process ceases. A person can run slower than you walk. During a run, a person should feel great. They shouldn't be gasping for air. They shouldn't feel like they're torturing themselves. So you need to run joyfully. During a run, it's best to listen to happy music or lectures through headphones. Your sense of self-esteem should always be tuned to the positive, which can be done with sound. And it's best to run in nature or in a calm environment, say at home, but you should always ventilate the room well during this time to have a lot of air. After running, if you're running at home, definitely go outside or onto the balcony for a while. Otherwise, the effect will be the opposite, meaning you ran, but
but the body didn't absorb this natural energy. This means it will absorb something else, the TV, computer or anything else, and it will start to deteriorate your health. It's best to run or walk in nature, that's really the best. But if that's not possible, then at the gym or at home. But fresh air and a positive mood are needed afterward. Feeling nauseous after 10 minutes? Right from the start, then you need to walk. Your situation with cerebral vessels is quite severe. When you run, your blood pressure drops significantly. This means you need to start with walking, then gradually speed up and eventually transition to running. If you start feeling nauseous or sick during exercise, it means you need to reduce the intensity, slow down. Does cycling count? No, it's not a way to heal because when people pedal, they might not pedal hard and often sit hunched over. What about swimming? Swimming, yes. But while swimming, people cool down quickly from the water and therefore can't swim for long because the element quickly affects them. Swimming itself is a way to extend life, but long duration swimming isn't suitable. To fully cleanse the body, you need to run for one hour and 40 minutes or one hour and 50 minutes, or walk twice as much accordingly. You can't swim that long in water, you'd just get too cold. What about for a pregnant woman? Pregnant women should walk. During this time, you can't cleanse the body because the child is growing. So, if you run for 22 minutes, around that time, you should catch your second wind. This means you'll find it easy to breathe as if you hadn't been running. This indicates that the first energy layer has been cleared. When you've run about 44 minutes, you'll experience a second wave of ease in your body, calm, and a second wind. This means the second energy layer has been cleared. Further, when you run from 44 minutes up to 1 hour and 6 minutes, it means your third energy layer is being cleared, which is related to the vessels, muscles, joints, and bones in the body. This means that if you run from 44 minutes to 1 hour and 6 minutes, atherosclerosis diminishes, as does subcutaneous fat. Hypertension, polyarthritis, all bone diseases also diminish, and this will heal over about six months. Each time after running from 44 minutes to one hour and six minutes, you might feel some joint pain. This doesn't mean it is deteriorating. It means it is healing. When you run for one hour and six minutes, you should do it only every three, four days, not daily. Doing it daily can be harmful to your health because the body does not have enough time to heal. This one hour and six minutes run, if you are a regular runner, can be started after a year of running, if you are older. Further, around one hour into the run, you will catch your second wind. This second wind and ease mean the third energy layer has been cleared, and immediately after this, the fourth layer will begin to clear. On the fourth energy layer, which is connected with all internal organs, thyroid, liver, kidneys, heart, all these will start to heal. From one hour and six minutes to one hour and 28 minutes, all your chronic diseases of internal organs will be treated. And after about six months of such runs, your liver, kidneys, pancreas will no longer be diseased. All illnesses will have subsided. Then after one hour and 28 minutes of running, you'll experience a second wind. This means the fourth energy layer has been treated, is healing. It has healed and then moves on to the fifth layer, which is associated with the nervous system and mental disorders. Schizophrenia diminishes if a person runs from 1 hour and 28 minutes to 1 hour and 50 minutes. All neuritis, polyneuritis, multiple sclerosis, severe diseases of the nervous system, and Parkinson diminish. But know that one cannot just run. It needs to be combined with other forms of rejuvenation. This is actually the rejuvenation of the body, which is what I'm explaining to you. And during these runs, your ways of living will also improve. The second energy layer is associated with a person's emotions and with their anger, resentfulness, and outbursts. If a person runs up to 44 minutes, the outbursts diminish, meaning a person will no longer have them. Further, from 44 minutes to 1 hour and 6 minutes of running is linked with a person's mood. There won't be bad moods. Depression will not occur. When running from 1 hour and 6 minutes to 1 hour and 28 minutes, it is connected with deep psychological functions. A person will not experience mental fatigue in life. And if running from 1 hour and 28 minutes to 1 hour and 50 minutes, a person will lose all inadequacy and mental breakdowns, deep mental dives, they will completely leave the body. In the same way fasting works, fasting also has periods. The maximum water fast is two and a half days. It cleanses all energy layers. The minimum fast, you eat a light meal in the evening, 
fruits or stewed vegetables and fast until lunch the next day. That's about 16 hours. You eat a normal lunch as usual, and this means that your body starts detoxifying. It's very important to know that if you just run and do not fast, then unnecessary substances accumulate in the body, which can be harmful. So, if you run, you definitely need to fast. You can fast until noon every day if you like. How to fast properly? I am telling you the correct options for help. The first option for fasting, from evening to noon. Next option, from evening to morning. Because you shouldn't break your fast in the evening. Breaking a fast, which means eating, is very difficult in the evening. Evening eating is unhealthy, therefore break your fast in the morning. And that will already be one and a half days of fasting. The Muslim fast of Ramadan ends in the evening, after sunset. If you want to know my opinion on this matter, here it is. During this Muslim fast, you can eat in the evening only stewed vegetables, buckwheat, salads, all possible fruits. But you should not eat grains and meat. This will all ruin your life. Evening meals after a long day of fasting should be only light food, otherwise it's fatal. All this will then settle in the body as undigested toxins, and you will become ill from it. Understand that this Muslim fast is meant not for cleansing health, but for spiritual strength. There are different types of fasting. For instance, a fast for spiritual strength allows eating at night. But there's nighttime food, pure milk or natural whipping cream, which you can drink at night, but shouldn't mix with anything else. Nighttime food includes any vegetables that grow above ground. This includes cabbage, zucchini, pumpkin and patty pan squash which can be eaten stewed at night as they digest well. Nuts also qualify as nighttime food, but not grains, meat or fruits. These do not serve as night food and all harm health. You can still eat fruits in the evening, but not at night, as they can overstimulate and disrupt sleep. You can fast from evening until the next morning. Then you break your fast at noon the following day. Then the next break after that is until the morning of the second day. It amounts to two and a half days or the maximum fast, which clears all energy layers. Women often have a lazy body. It can't run, say, one hour, 50 minutes, or 16 kilometers. So you choose running for, say, 44 minutes, at least clearing two energy layers, but at the same time you fast to the maximum. The maximum fast or maximum run extends life by 20 years. Active longevity, for instance, at my age of 64, when I run 16 kilometers, it increases to 86 years. That's 22 years. I can see it in my body, I see the obstacles, the tough periods, I see it all. How did my cleansing go? Four years ago, I started running 500 meters. Initially, I didn't know this was necessary. I was practicing yoga and fasting all my life. But then I feel suffocated when there's a little bit of strain, though I thought I was living correctly. I realized I lacked this form of asceticism practice. I started by running 500 meters slower than my walking pace. Gradually, I started running more and more, and after a year, I was running about 7-8 kilometers. After two and a half years, I was running 16 kilometers. But when I started running from 40 minutes to an hour, my right knee hurt, and it was only in this running interval that I began to lose weight. From 44 minutes to one hour, six minutes, the fat starts to melt. I lost 7 kilograms and didn't lose any more weight. I stopped losing weight altogether because there was no excess weight left which is normal for the body. My knee ached for five months after running, throbbing. My friends told me it might wear out soon as they read on the internet that you shouldn't run and should walk with sticks instead. I didn't pay much attention to it. After five months, my right knee recovered completely. Then both my hip joints started hurting. They ached for about three or four months, then my left knee and then both ankles. I stopped paying attention to it. Then my entire spine hurt, then my brain, then my eyes, and then my heart, all in succession. Now I run like a horse. I'm 54 and I feel no pain at all. My friends tell me, you're getting younger and younger, and the wrinkles are disappearing. Imagine that. My face has fewer wrinkles now. Those of you who attended my lectures four years ago saw that my face was fuller. It's become like it was when I was 40. My face was roughly this shape. It's interesting to see how it all happens. So, the next form of aging is heat in the body. Heat in the body means emotional stress, nervous breakdowns. It means irritability, disrupted sleep, disturbed digestion, rumbling in the stomach, gases. This is excessive heat in the digestive organs. Heat in the body means all inflammatory processes. The first stage is just heat and emotions. The 
The second stage, inflammation. This means aging has progressed a step further. And the third stage, various ulcers, diabetes, bronchial asthma, tuberculosis. All these diseases are from excess heat in the body, including lupus and severe collagen diseases. These are diseases that destroy the entire body. This is the third stage, already a terminal stage of body heat, which leads to death. How to remove heat from the body? Body heat is removed through two asceticism practices. The first asceticism practice is static exercises. The second is water fasting. Static exercises are done like this. You can just stand still and pray. When you stand for 13 minutes, one energy layer is cleared and so on. If you stand for one hour and five minutes, it means all energy layers are cleared. If you stand for one hour and five minutes, at least run for 44 minutes. Otherwise, when there's only static, static treatment and no dynamic, it creates a strong imbalance in the body. Likewise, if there's only dynamic movement and no static imbalance also occurs. The third type of aging is tension in the body. Tension as well as hustle, attention disruption, concentration issues. When a person feels they can't relax, this also leads to smoking. By the way, heat in the body leads to drinking. Heat in the body makes people drink and tension makes them smoke. The first stage is tension. The second stage is spasms and pain in the body, including headaches and constipation, including veins popping out. All this is tension. The third stage is deformation of joints, spine, internal organs, various adhesions, blockages, and so on. All this is tension. It is treated with prolonged continuous movement and fasting. In other words, if you have headaches, it's the vessels. This means you run from 44 minutes to one hour and six minutes. The headaches will go away. If your joints hurt, you need to run from 44 minutes to one hour and six minutes. Your joints won't hurt. If your spine hurts, it's deeper, like the internal organs from one hour and six minutes to one hour and 28 minutes. Osteochondrosis, sciatica, they go away. Hemorrhoids are treated by running from 44 minutes to one hour and six minutes. And spinal hernia? Spinal hernia. You need to do static exercises. There's a second way to do static exercises. I'll explain now. Sit down, stretch your legs forward and lean forward very slowly. If you learn to stay bent for 40 minutes and then get on your knees and arch back for about five minutes and start doing some jogging as well, the hernia will disappear in six months. These are the two static exercises you should do. Sit on the floor, stretch your legs out and lean forward. Lean as much as you can. If you can do 10 minutes, great. 20 minutes, even better. 40 minutes is the maximum. Then get up, do some bending, and then get on your knees and lean back like this. You can make a bridge or just lie back and stay like that. Then again, after that, stretch your legs out like this. So you lie down first, then get up and do bends again. Finish with bends. That's it. This is static gymnastics. And during this time, you can repeat a prayer. Very effective. Blood clots, water fasting. Start with fasting and then start moving very carefully. Not abruptly and quickly, but carefully. And gradually the clots will dissolve. To learn more on the subject of health and healing of the body, please make sure to read my health guide, available for download on my YouTube channel or on my Instagram page. Thank you very much and see you soon.